is the prophetic? What's the point of it? Um, so uh, I guess I can start with what it isn't. Um, the point of prophecy is not for other people to be the voice of God for you, right? It's not to give you lottery numbers. It's not to tell you what to do. It, that's not the point of it. And, that, and so if, if you're coming to prophecy and that's what you're looking for, you're either going to be disappointed or manipulated. And I've seen that happen. Uh, our, you know, our desire is so strong that, that we either we make something out of words that's not there or um, we try we, or people step into the gap and they hurt us by giving us direction where they don't they shouldn't. In the new covenant, where each of us have a relationship with God, where each of us are called to commune with him, to know him, to hear his voice. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. The point of prophecy is different than in the Old Testament where one person stood in the gap and told everybody else what God was saying. And so what's the point of prophecy then if we can all hear his voice? Well, for the very fact that a lot of times listening to God in the areas where we're most hurt or most uh, passionate, or most have most desire is really hard. Anybody found that to be true? Like you were like, I think this is what God wants for me. Or maybe it's just what I want for myself, right? And so that's where it's so helpful to have other people who are hearing God to bring confirmation to some things you're hearing. And so the primary part of the, the point of the prophetic in the new covenant is to provide confirmation to what you're hearing, or to, what I say, jumpstart your conversation with God. Sometimes we're not, we don't hear God because we're offended, we're hurt, uh, whatever. And that's where um, the scripture tells us that they're to encourage and to edify and to comfort, right? And so those are those things, encourage, build up, or comfort actually provides us, that's 1 Corinthians 14, um, provide us with the courage then to re-engage God, to have a conversation with God. And so I always say that when people are uh, having a, uh, you know, they're coming to a prophetic word, uh, the first thing you should do when you're listening is to compare it to the um, to the fruit of the Spirit. Does this thing bring the fruit of the Spirit? Does it bring life to me? Does it cause me to want to draw near to God? Or does it cause me to want to walk away from God? Oh, I think I know what you're doing. And so, so... Uh, in that point, does it bring does it bring joy? Does it bring peace? Does it bring love, or does it bring fear, confusion, and doubt? And so, in those moments, I I, I want to lay those things aside, and I want to lean into the things that bear the fruit or the evidence of the Spirit, and therefore use those as a springboard to draw near to Him. Does that make sense? So it's just really simple, basic things to understand about prophecy in this season, and so. We just really encourage you. Uh, tonight, uh, we've got the prophetic ministry going on. And so just um, really ask uh, if you're interested, uh, check that out. I think they are full up, but if you put yourself on the waiting list, they'll, they'll work a time in for you. Uh, I'm not, I mean, not, well, that's not true. I totally screwed that up. If you put yourself on the waiting list, if something frees up prior to start time, they'll let you know. And if not, if, uh, if, if what happens, uh, if you don't, you'll have priority opportunity to sign up for next week. Also, we're going to be doing these uh, live prophetic times. I believe that we're doing one next noon, Eastern Standard Time or Eastern Daylight Time. So you want to jump in. But in the process, what I want to ask you guys is don't ask people who are hearing God to be the voice of God for you, but ask God to speak to you through people in such a way that it encourages you to listen to him and draw near to him for yourself. Does that make sense? All right, guys, have a great day. Love y'all.